Hello and welcome to the Just Interesting Podcast with me, Robin, joined by Martin. Good evening. Good evening, one and all. And good evening to you too, Robin. Oh, thank you, Martin. Thank you. How are you doing? Uh, I'm all right. I'm happy to be here. Excited. Uh, sad and tragic about Alex, though. I mean... Oh, oh, uh, not, a, not again. The whale will never be the same, but... I know. Human, man versus nature, it's going to happen occasionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the the... the the World Wildlife uh, Federation are on to him. Um, it's a recovery mission right now. He, he shouldn't have done what he, <laughs> he, <shouldn't laughs> done what he did. And, he really shouldn't and, have. It was a bad and, idea. And yeah, and they're, I'm devastated for both him and the whale. Um, so, so that's that. Really, I mean, we move on. We 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 move on from uh, this issue, and we you know yeah. we wish Alex's family all the best. I guess we're dealing with the fallout from this, both the anger yeah. and, of course, the tragedy. Yeah, so, it's uh, unlucky, uh, unlucky, Alex. Yeah. Just hearing it made me blubber, but you know. <laughs> Oi, Oi, beautiful, Oi, <laughs> beautiful. Oi, Oi, Oi. Oh wow, wow. So we, I mean, we have a fair few people in the chat on this Monday evening at well, just gone nine p.m. BST, which is where you can find us Good every time. Monday for this podcast. Hello to well, lots of people. Hello to Andy Jones, who says hi. Uh, that's great. Hi. Hello, CS Drummerson. Hello, P. Greg. Hello, James Linton, and the rest of you. Welcome, welcome, welcome aboard on this fine Monday evening. Robin. Yes. Before we get started, when we do, you know, we do the whole shebang of what we learned this week, and of course, a riddle, you. and of course, our main topic. How are you? <laughs> I'm all right, thanks. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to uh, to discuss what we're discussing today. I was a bit worried uh, when I suggested it that we might be playing against the gods of YouTube with our, with this choice of topic. Oh yeah, we're mentioning but... this the the end. Well, the end. Mentioning the end word, and then YouTube doesn't really like that. Mm. Um, so of course, if you if you want to fund this podcast, which is most likely not going to be funded by ads, let's be honest, then you can of course. <laughs> join our patreon page where a lot of other people have actually joined and i mean last week we actually spoke about the the benefits of of sweat so we did. i mean if, if you're interested in that then you can head on over but of course there's over a hundred other episodes over on our patreon where we have a lot of lovely support and, and i'd like to read out some names um to, to provide some tribute to these quite well, some of them actually quite long-term supporters yeah, so thank incredible you very much people. so i'd like to thank not exclusively the following, but in particular the following. And that is Kurt Jones, Super Show podcast, who actually had some, some pretty uh, tragic news this yeah, week. Yeah, that was actually quite sad. Believe it. We, we, we won't mention that because it's just making me upset. Yeah. Uh, Nicholas Dill, John Baker, Janie, Henny Raphael, Hey Hey Swanboat, Caleb Wilkerson, Ahmad, Rashad Najjar, Simon Workman, Marion Kelly, and Marion Keldson, apologies, I'm so sorry if I've mispronounced that, Marion. Josh Chomatek, Emmett Tapia, Denton Pease, also known as Peasewad, a filthy casual, Tom Odin, and I believe I've possibly missed out uh, a name or two there. But anyway, to you guys, if I've missed anyone, I do apologize. Um, and also, of course, our YouTube member, Captain Wonky. Hey. So thank you, thank you all of you for your continued support. Support it does mean a lot to us. It keeps the lights on. It, it pays for my voice to sound slightly less annoying than than it would otherwise um, with this nice microphone, and it also pays for our um our trips as well, mm. of which we have another episode coming out at some point from our trip to York. So you know, hold on for that one. Um, it should be a should be a nice. I can't say a bumpy ride, but that doesn't make sense. It was. It was fun. It was fun. Well, there were there were a few bumps in the night. Mm. <laughs> oh, hint, 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 nothing, nothing hint, sexual. Hint. Nothing sexual, Robin. Yeah, it wasn't a Wednesday. Mm. No, it wasn't a Wednesday. No, nope. Alex. Last Wednesday, he gave that well his heart, and the very next day, he got caught by the <laughs> World Wildlife Federation. <laughs> it's a blowhole, Alex. I told him it's a blowhole. Mm. He didn't listen. He misunderstood. He did not listen. He liberally, willfully misconstrued Awful. what i said Awful. yeah well r riddle me this in terms of it's not misconstruing but in, in terms of answering a, a riddle Ooh. i think it's that time isn't it we do one yeah. one once a week and usually they're they're a little bit difficult and they're quite anglo-saxon in nature sorry 
which is fine. I enjoy those, but they are difficult. And this one, I think, is a lot easier. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So uh, if you're if you're a bit of a dipshit like me, um, this one might actually be uh, be for you. So to all you dipshits out there, um, enjoy. Okay. So the riddle this week is: What word is pronounced the same if you take away four of its five letters? What word is pronounced the same if you take away four of its five letters? Huh. Mm. That is tricky. Mm. Yeah, it's not that easy, actually, is it? It's easy once you know it, like all of these. Yeah. Well, I, as as uh, people who watch the podcast and listen to the podcast on a podcast platform of their choice will know by now, <laughs> I, I'm not good at riddles. I really struggle with these things. <laughs> so what's what word sounds the same mm. if you take yep. away four, four of, of its five, five letters? letters. Letters. That's Back, it. This is a. Mm. That's it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. say, Martin. This sounds like an actual riddle, like an actual thing, as opposed to the dreck that Alex <laughs> comes up with. Like, what's red and hot? Is it fire? <laughs> no, it's my eyeball. Like, what, what are you talking about? What is this? What is that? <laughs> sounds, sounds like Alan Partridge. <laughs> <laughs> No, Alex's riddle's never that bad, but this actually sounds like a genuine riddle. And I no, it's a, yeah, it's a bit of a wordplay. Oh, ah, wordplay. A little bit of word, bit of wordplay uh, with the okay. you know what? I mean, it makes sense, doesn't it? The letters take away four out of the five letters, and and it and it's pronounced it's just, the same. Ah, uh, okay. So, yeah. mm, I think I, mm, I think I might have an idea. Actually, when okay. you mentioned wordplay, I was like, oh, okay, okay, punning. I think I might have an idea, but I'll save it till the end. One more. Yes. Yeah. But if you know, then feel free to drop your uh, your thoughts in the comment section at home, or of course. If you're watching this on, you know, on re- on on repeat or on an audio platform of your choice, then you know you can drop us a message with your answer if you so wish, and you can do that in the comment section, of course. But you can also do it via Twitter. I'm at Mart Interesting. I am at All Time Robin. Very good, and of course you can also email us, um, uh, and I can't I contact just interesting at gmail.com if you want to contact us. So please do feel free to do that. Cool, Robin. Without further ado. What, sir, have you learnt this week? Oh, what have I learnt this week? Well, hopefully this will be an interesting thing, because, as you do, I was looking at some old uh, scientific research papers from the 90s. Mm. Uh, just, it happened. Uh, and there was one from 19, <laughs> 1997 um, in the, was it NIM, you know, N-I-M-H, the National Library of Medicine? Okay. Uh, no, whatever. Mm. Anyway. Um, <laughs> whatever. <doesn't matter. laughs> People know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and um, it was a study done in 1997 uh, to see, to try to help surgeons who might be dealing with people, particularly children, I guess, who swallowed metallic objects oh, and no. need surgery to extract the item. Mm. So it was a study mm. to see how long certain objects could last in the human stomach. So they mixed up some... Uh, uh, stomach acid. Yeah. Uh, obviously they didn't extract it from a real person, but they no, know no, what okay. chemicals yeah, go yeah, into yeah, stomach yeah. acid. So they mixed sure. them up with their own. And they tested uh, how long a penny, uh, a battery, you know, one of those flat round batteries, whatever you call oh, yeah. it. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, ones that go on your watches and things. Mm-hmm. And a razor blade would last in stomach acid. And okay. the results were that the penny was completely unaffected. So that was that would really? last. Was it nice and shiny afterwards? Um, maybe they didn't say if it was shiny, but I guess it could be because acid would clean off the dirt. You'd think. Yeah, yeah Silla Bang does it, so probably acid does too. <laughs> it probably did. Um, the disc battery was damaged, but it didn't leak, which is good to know. Good, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, the razor blade, though, uh, could be uh, broken. They were they were mm. they were dulled and they were weakened. They'd snap in two in about fifteen okay. hours. So basically, it doesn't matter if you uh, if you um, swallow razor blades; it's it's fine. It will just dissolve in your stomach. Yeah, right? I, th- I did think twice about using this fact because I thought, are we going to? Yeah. Am I going to be implying that it's okay to swallow batteries and razor blades? Um, the answer is no, kids. Don't do it. <laughs> it's not recommended. <laughs> but apparently, it's not all all like the end of the world. I imagine what the the, the real problem from swallowing a razor blade is when it goes down your esophagus, right? Because that's going to be like mm. a, quite a tight tube and you've got a razor blade. Yeah, a, yeah, not great. Not a sharp great. razor blade going down yeah, there. But once yeah. it's in your stomach, it's kind of like sitting there getting dissolved. Yeah, nothing to worry it's about. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, yes, there is probably a lot to worry about. But tear your, tear your stomach open. But, yeah. you know, until, until that time happens, you know, yeah. we get to that, cross that bridge, we get to it. What I don't cool. know is what <clears throat> surgeons concluded from this study, as in 
What they were saying was, <laughs> within the first 24 hours, batteries are intact, pennies aren't affected, and razor blades are snapping in too. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. What's, what, yeah. What, what's the action? What's the next <laughs> yeah, what, do you, what do you do with that information? <laughs> it's like, oh, so we'll just, we'll just wait for them to shit it out, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's what, strange that they yeah. went for actual, like, <clears throat> you think that they would go for just the uh, the metal and the compounds, right? The, the, you know, as opposed to going for actual actual objects. objects. Yeah, go, good point. Oh, no, very, it's very yeah. specific to to an object. I imagine they they hmm. knew the uh, the chemical makeup of these. Like, oh, this is eighty percent aluminium, and that was what they're interested in, as yeah. well as it. So, great razor blades, fine then. Yeah, but there's like a million different types of razor blades. Like, oh, yeah, didn't think of that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't yeah, ask, what, what brand razor blade is this? And is it actually? This is yes. one of those sponsored studies. It's a Wilkinson Sword uh, sponsored study. Our razor blades can be swallowed, <laughs> <laughs> or our razor blades can't be swallowed because they will last forever. Yes, don't exactly, go to the toilet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a proper buy it for life item. You do not swallow this razor blade, okay? Whatever you do. <laughs> so, what did you Very learn good. this week, Martin? Well, I learned a little story actually. Oh, yeah. uh, it's a story. It's a story from a, a couple of years ago, but it's so good, and I found it recently that I thought I'd just bring it up. I say it's so good; it's quite interesting. So, basically, in in China, a uh, big big place, in a uh, a place called Suzhou in the Jiangsu province. Oh yeah. Um, I would say I would apologise for my pronunciation, but let's be honest. YouTube's banned in China, so yeah, I don't have much to apologize yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, it's probably fine. <laughs> um, a, a a woman, this woman was was giving a, was um, giving away her son to a bride, right, at a wedding. Oh, okay. I thought she, you... has, she has a son. She has a son. Her right. her son was marrying this young girl. Ha ha ha! Lovely, happy day. Blah blah blah. At the wedding, what she noticed is a birthmark on this girl, on her hand. Yeah, she was like, "Hold on a second. I had a daughter, who, who uh, I, the article doesn't actually say, but I lost as a child, potentially lost, and then was trafficked when they were a child, who had a birthmark very, very similar to the one on my son's bride's hand. Whoa. And so she spoke. She was like, "Hold on, whoa, 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 whoa." Spoke to the parents of this, of this girl, and said. Right, you have to be. You have to level with me here. Is your daughter adopted? Have you adopted your daughter? Did you find her? Where did you see her? Blah blah blah. I think this might be my daughter. After a fair amount of back and forth, and you know the parents are quite reluctant to 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 give up this information, and you know a, a bit apprehensive about what what might happen. They admitted, like, yes, we adopted her as a young child from this particular region, and it aligned with the mother's story and so the bride was able to confirm uh with biological tests that actually she was her long lost daughter no uh, and had been picked up <clears throat> on the roadside 20 years earlier um and so of course this then uh oh, calls into awkward. question the wedding right it's like yeah. you're my daughter this is my son you know you can't get married yeah but but the wedding went ahead because the mother had adopted the son, and so they weren't biologically <laughs> related. What? That's so a crazy talk twist. Talk about that family reunion. That is incredible. Yeah. Oh, so, man. That's the, what are the chances? Yeah. What are the chances I of know. that happening? I know. Crazy, right? That is mad. Yeah. And what a happy ending. I'm surprised. That's, this should be a film. This is a great yeah, plot it for a be, film. Yeah, it could be, couldn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's horrible yeah. in the in the in, end of the second act, beginning of the third act, the bit where they realise, oh, we're, we're brother and sister. Um, yes. Were they but a very... No. Do you know if they were a traditional family in terms of, um, you know, sexual relations outside of marriage? Were they... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't actually know. I'm not sure. But yeah, there would definitely be a, an element for those who, who weren't in the know of like, this is my son. Probably for her parents, actually, her adopted parents were like, oh my goodness. Yeah. This is her son, but no, the son was adopted too, but by the mother. So two sets of adopted children marrying each other. So like not all biologically right related. Yeah. Yeah. So the moral of the tale is I'm not sure. 
No, there isn't really one, is there? <laughs> <laughs> just a, quite a nice story. Yeah. Oh man, that was dark. That's terrifying. In China as well, because that's a that's a big place. Yeah. There's a lot of scope for losing your long lost child in China. It's oh, amazing yeah. that they should come back around and have all the people to pair with. I know. Yeah. I know. What a crazy story. Maybe yeah. he was. You know the whole thing about uh, you marry your parents. You know, oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. he was like, you remind me of my mum. I like you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A bit weird. <laughs> a little bit weird. Yeah. But wow. A bit weird, but yes. Yeah. Mad story. Mad story. Absolutely mad story. Cool. Oh, camera. Okay. Kai, camera shy Coco in the comments said, my girlfriend married her brother's father-in-law. Girlfriend. Oh, because my hillbillies. girlfriend, I'm trying to think my girlfriend married her. Brothers, Brothers father-in-law. Father oh, yeah. Yeah, that okay. works. That okay. does make sense, yes. That is yeah. legal. That's allowed. Yeah. In fact, I'm not, that's one of those myths. Uh, we should check this. Maybe we should do a whole episode about this. But I remember it's one of those things where you're not allowed to marry your cousins. But it's like it's not actually a rule. It's just a kind of frowned upon thing. I think in the yeah, UK, no, it's just... it might... Is it legal in the UK or is it Ill illegal in the UK, but actually technically illegal in America, but it's frowned upon? What's this of, of marrying your... You, marrying your first cousin. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think you... I think you, oh, I don't know, actually. I think, I think it's legal, isn't it? I think it might be. Legal, but it's like, it shouldn't be, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably shouldn't be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Not, not ideal. No. No. That's one way. No, no, no. Understatement. Not, not ideal to marry not your ideal. first cousin. Yeah. Not ideal. I mean, I, I don't know if there are any uh, married cousins in our audience, but I'd be surprised. So I'll probably get away with saying not ideal. Yeah. You know, I mean, gonna, we don't. Gonna, there's, no, there's no damnation here. Not but, uh, judging the quality of the love in that relationship, just the wisdom of doing it biologically. Well, this you is know, true. That's the, yeah. that's the problem yeah. there. Yeah. Oh. Oh, C.S. Drummerson. My mother divorced my dad and re. Re and remarried to my dad's first cousin. Oh, okay. And had another son. So my half brother is also my cousin. Oh, I see. Wow. Okay, so yeah, so it's not. I mean, it's just marrying your your dad's first cousin. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That yeah. is allowed. Interesting dynamic, but that's, not, yeah, fine, of course. But yeah, that's one, that's dynamic. a weird one. My brain is firing off if I know that's wrong, but it isn't wrong. That's just. Weird. <laughs> a weird coincidence. Yeah. yeah. It makes yep. you think twice. I did have a paranoia for a while growing up that I would, um, because my grandparents had come down from Scotland via Northern England to the Midlands, and then my parents had um, met in Birmingham and then moved again to where I went to school. So I, wasn't, I went to school. I wasn't born in the place I went to school. Anyway, so okay. because yeah. of that movement of family, uh, I did get a bit paranoid that I would meet and fall in love with someone who was actually a, co <laughs> uh, a cousin because I had about 10, no, 11 uncles and aunties who all had dozens of children and we didn't keep oh, in really? touch with them. Yeah. And I was just kind of like, what if I... Always a risk. What if I meet and fall in love with a cousin? That was going to be a risk. Yeah. In some communities, they have to double check, don't they? Does anyone know? Like, it's not at the wedding, does anyone know a reason? It's a, at home. Does anyone know a reason <laughs> why these two... <laughs> Yeah. Oh, ah, oh, fantastic. Okay. Right. Shall we move on to some of the, well, our favorite comments of this yeah, week? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's some great comments in the chat. They've started a, a really interesting conversation. Oh, um, man, there's a lot of, there's, there's a lot of un, well, let's just say uh, non-traditional family dynamics. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And again, nothing wrong with these that are being described, just, just non-traditional. Yeah. Uh, Paranoid Android. That's a good comment. I'm I'm from Iceland, and there's a specific dating app that filters out all relatives due to their small that's population. A great I idea. heard I've heard this before, actually. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, quite necessary with a population so small, right? Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. The longer a country like Iceland goes on for, with such a small population, the um, how do they avoid that? Dating app. Well, apparently, I, I imagine they probably haven't in the past, and it's caused issues. So, mm -mm -mm. yeah. Well, obviously, there's a need for the app, isn't there? Yeah, I wonder if it must yeah. it must be doable in a place like Iceland because of the small population. You can trace yeah. relatives quite easily, but when you get to a bigger country, uh, it must get oh, yeah. problematic, particularly yeah. with 
like you get to England and like everyone called Smith. It's like, oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> oh dear, this is no this, is, dry, this is a wildfire. It's gone out of control. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. Well, what comments have you got for us, Robin? Have you got anything anything that stands out from the last week or so? Yeah, we've got think? a couple. I want to respond to a, a, a comment made by Driving With Matt, who commented, mm. uh, a, a member, a YouTube member, uh, who commented on... Um, both uh, a YouTube uh, community post and on the video itself, which was exclusive to our patrons, and it was about the sweet scent of sweat and a study oh, that yes. suggests it might be soothing. Almost yeah. got the uh, sibilance in there. And driving with Matt basically said the same thing on both uh, places and said, um, is there a, a fetish behind this, this topic? I imagine so, yeah. <laughs> well, my, I have. I'd like to respond to driving with Matt's comment with another question, which is: Do you are you asking if there's a fetish on behalf of Martin or me, or on behalf of the scientists <laughs> behind the study? Please, uh, please let us know. Please clarify <laughs> what. You yeah, mean. it is weird. Yeah, and if you haven't seen that one, firstly go over and, 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 and go over and have a look and interact if you want to. But it is strange, isn't it? These studies of, of gathering first the gathering of sweat and mm. then administering sweat to the participants in the study it's all just disgusting but very interesting <laughs> very interesting very fascinating uh, yeah 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 but i think it's it's the physiological re uh, reaction but also i think possibly the associations with just that that idea that if you can smell sweat it's like there's someone else in the room so it cures that hankering if you're feeling uh, lonely or yeah. or isolated perhaps but anyway go watch it and let us know what you think, because I'm interested in, in having lots of opinions on sweat, of course. Oh, yes. Uh, any comments that stood out to you, Martin? I've got one from David Gatt, and this was uh, about, should we ban TikTok in... Uh, uh, yeah. Should we ban TikTok? Yeah. So the episode about, um, you know, banning TikTok in the US, and of course the the debates in Congress that have been had about privacy concerns with, with TikTok. Mm -hmm. And David says, everything we have is made in China, our phones, screens, clothes, TVs, etc. What effect does one app do? Should we ban Facebook as it was proved to be selling information? And that's a good point. I think that, yeah, like we're in a, a globalized, interconnected world where, mm -hmm. you know, so much is, is Chinese. And actually, there have been discussions about banning Chinese phones in particular and devices. Yeah, especially in the US. I know there's uh, issues with Huawei, wasn't there? Yeah, that was the big one. Yeah, Privacy concerns. So so potentially, potentially it's a yes. Um, but I think that's it, isn't it? It's, it's clothes, uh, and clothes and screens. Uh, maybe not TVs, maybe TVs. You know, some of these things have access to your personal private information that the state could, could then use. Um, so there's definitely a divide between... Uh, inanimate objects and those that can actually track your data i think um but yeah in terms of facebook and selling information i think there have been calls at least uh if it's not you know selling it to states at the very least it's you know uh it's, it's using it in 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 ways in which i think if it, people knew exactly how it was being used would be mm. very much against but of course no one reads that small print they just click that they accept the terms and conditions so yes I mean, should we ban social media? That's a big topic at the moment, isn't That's it? I know some states, one. Yeah. some states are pushing towards a, a ban on, is it anyone under 18 or under 16 from having, Ooh, which really? is minors in general, yeah. having access to social media? I think it's, uh, it's some of the southern, well, some of the southern states, don't be real surprised there. <laughs> I know te Texas were looking at it. Um, were, yeah. Was it Utah potentially as well, actually? So not southern, but, you know, um, we're potentially looking at, banning social media entirely for a, for a generation so interesting question and the answer is possibly but for a, a variety of different reasons <laughs> this is such a big topic i feel we could definitely do a whole episode about it yes yes it's uh yeah madness madness to think that that should be a thing but hey we'll see we'll, we'll see well sometimes i'd like to fast forward 100 years and read the history books about our period right now oh. you know just because it's, it's not going to be looked on favorably i don't think so i don't think it's so. like not not many eras of history are looked on favorably whether, whether no, it's like that's true the way in which society views certain groups or of mm. course the way it acts in certain times and in, in history and i think mm. that we we feel now that we're kind of on a modern uh, our, our values are very modern and in most cases progressive although 
there are mm. certain elements of society that are trying to take us back to the dark ages but um but yeah i think we're going to look back on this and be quite ashamed of, of the way in which we've acted no real surprise yeah. there but, but even even the thought even the things that we think are um modern and progressive views within i imagine at some stage won't be seen as such i, I think you're 100 percent right history, the way history works isn't it yeah it's not static <laughs> and you know but those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it oh yes oh that famous phrase Indeed. and speaking of dark periods in our history martin mm. would you like to go on to the main topic of today's podcast and discuss a certain british author's activities during world war ii i would love to oh yes then <laughs> Well, before we begin, I just want to ask you a question, Martin, that I should have asked yes. you uh, a while ago. Uh, did you have, have you ever <laughs> asked... about your tea? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever asked Jeeves anything? Oh, I've asked Jeeves lots. I've said, how do I go on to Google? Um, <laughs> well, one question, yeah. The most yeah. asked question on Ask Jeeves. Yeah. Um, is Ask Jeeves even still a thing? I don't right? think so. Yeah, it's gone. I don't think... if, it is, if it is, it's more of a kind of a, a meme site as opposed to anything else, right? Okay, it's just asks.com now. Oh, they got rid of the... Oh, that's a shame. Got rid of Jeeves. Yeah. Shame. shame. So I remember using that a lot when I was a kid. It was like, before Google really took off, it was Ask Jeeves. Uh, yeah, and it's kind of novel, isn't it? You're like, oh, it's you know someone answering for you. Yeah, yeah. the idea of a personality behind it. Uh, Jeeves, the butler. Uh, and that was my introduction, actually, uh, by way of segue to the world of P.G. Woodhouse. Most famous probably today for his creation, Jeeves, the butler. Jeeves mm -hmm. and Bertie Wooster. Oh, yes. The, the toffish but very kind-hearted uh, imbecile who's yes. got the brilliant butler, the Machiavellian scheming genius um, who sets everything right in the world of Bertie Wooster. Uh, a humorist and wordsmith was uh, P.G. Woodhouse, famous in the 1930s when his career peaked. Um, Best known, I think, now today for Jeeves and Worcester, but also created mm -hmm. some uh, famous characters like Smith with a P. <laughs> um, I don't actually know Smith with a P. I know Jeeves and Worcester well. Yeah, you, have you read uh, or watched the series? I've, I've, uh, I've watched the series with um, Hugh Laurie and Stephen Fry. Mm. I know, yeah, it's yeah, very it's, good, actually. It's funny. Yeah, yeah. I definitely want to keep go back and watch it. We were talking about just before we began. I want to go back and watch the rest of it. I didn't finish it, but I've read a few of the books. I've got a few on the shelf behind me, actually, and... Um, they're very good adaptations uh, yeah. of the source material. Really good. Um, so a bit of biographical information before we get stuck into what happened in World War II. Um, P.G. Woodhouse, real name, full name, I should say, Pelham Grenville Woodhouse. Yeah, of course. <laughs> was he actually Jeeves? He, <laughs> he wasn't. <laughs> was born in 1881 in Guildford, which is in southern England, mm -hmm. uh, not far outside London, actually. He was the third son of a magistrate who was based in Hong Kong, spent most of his time there. Uh, but poor old PG went to boarding school, Dulwich College. Uh, Very nice. From there, went to work at a bank and wrote stories mm -hmm. in his spare time, which fairly quickly, when he was in his early 20s, led to great success. And by the 1930s, he was working in Hollywood, and he had plays on, he had novels, he had film scripts, and he was earning £100,000 a year in the 1930s. In olden, in olden money? Yes, yeah, so it's like what? five, <laughs> six million pounds a year that's, now. Yeah, that's big. Bump, madness, big bump, isn't it? Yeah. absolute madness. And in all, he published over 90 books, 40 plays, 200 short stories before he died in 1975 at the age of 90. Well, fair, well, fair play. He's kind of worked quite hard, hasn't he? By, by, all, by all accounts. Yeah. Plus, plus a little bit of privilege, I imagine. But hey. A little bit, yeah. I mean, I would hope that if I'm earning £5 million a year, I would have the time to write a few novels. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but yeah, true. he was prolific. And that's, that's hard. That's, it takes talent to be prolific, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, in 1934, he moved to France from Britain uh, to avoid taxes. <sighs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah, always, uh, yeah. Well, let's not judge, but also let's judge. So yeah. he, yeah. he moved to a well-known... Well, obviously, obviously comes from money as well, Dulwich College. Exactly. It's, it's, yeah. it's not cheap. Uh, it probably wasn't then either. Yeah. No, he comes from money and liked having money and had so much money that he decided he didn't want to pay taxes. So, just, so yeah. he moved yeah. to France That's where they had done. very little taxes and a bit of a tax haven, uh, along with a whole bunch of other British people who lived in this area of northern France, um, 
where they just, if they weren't holidaying, they were living there to avoid taxes. Uh, and he was there in France on the 21st of May, 1940, when Ooh, war happened. Okay. German oh, troops yeah. with Nazi insignia advanced through northern France. Um, P.G. Like Woodhouse it, was... Like idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Woodhouse uh, was married at this time, and uh, they had a dog. No children, just that uh, Edith, I think was his wife's name. And, uh, <laughs> was the dog called? Edith. Edith Junior. So, you know, I don't know what the dog's name was, actually. Um, so they naturally decided to flee the Nazis coming in. They had been warned mm. beforehand. Yeah, that the Nazis didn't should... like dogs, it's true. Uh, they hated dogs. That's the only reason they were there, to get the dogs. <laughs> That's a, a belittling history of it, isn't it? Never mind. Um, <laughs> they were well-known dog haters. That's what they, if, if, there's, if, we, if we haven't learned anything about the Nazis, it's that they were, if they were well-known dog <laughs> haters. So, yeah, no, good, good choice, I think. Good choice. So they've missed their chance to uh, go back to Britain with all the other British people who'd fled before them. Mm -hmm. So they decided to go to Portugal and fly from Portugal to America. Because Ooh, again, okay. uh, low taxes. That's that's beside the point. Uh, unfortunately, their car broke down before they could get out of France and they were caught by the Nazis. Ah, uh, right, okay. This was when they were sent to internment camps. Uh, and now mm. the, the camps that citizen prison, prisoners from countries like France were sent to were actual prisons. They weren't the other kind of camps that yeah, yeah, homosexuals, yeah. Jews, undesirables, they called them, were sent yeah. to. These were actual prisons. And they weren't necessarily pleasant places, but they weren't so bad. For example... Yeah. You're like, unlikely to be killed there. Yeah, unlikely. Yeah, it, it was. so it was crowded. Uh, I think he was in a cell that was designed for one person, but there were three other people in it, so it was a bit cramped. Mm. Uh, but he had time to write a novel, and on the 21st of June 1941, so about a year into his imprisonment, uh, he was in the middle of playing a game of cricket. Oh, as you do. As, as you do in prison. Uh, when members of the Gestapo came along and took him to Berlin, uh, um, yes. where he lived for the next few years in the Hotel Adlon, which is like yeah, a five-star right. luxury hotel. Yeah. What? That doesn't sound like that doesn't sound like prisoner of war stuff. It's not too bad. The reason no, he no. was there, though, was mm. because he was there at the invitation of the Nazi government because mm. uh, a man called Werner Plack, who was a Nazi operative who had been in Hollywood before the war, working yeah. as a freelance propaganda agent, uh, whose job was to recruit British and Americans to create content for the German propaganda machine. Ah, okay. I see. Uh, but yeah, I see. So yeah. He had the brilliant idea that, hey, this P.G. Woodhouse fellow, who's a massively popular and successful author, could do some radio broadcasts mm. and will broadcast them to the Americans and to the British. And so Woodhouse was like, fine, I'll do it, but you have to spare my dog. <laughs> so I don't know the exact negotiations okay, that he okay. went through, uh, but they did pay him. Okay. So they paid him for five radio broadcasts, which he delivered. And they were a lighthearted, humorous account of his experience as a prisoner of the Nazi regime. Ah, so was he, was he painting them in a fairly favorable light then? Well, maybe we can best judge uh, how things came across by the way the British people reacted to these radio broadcasts. Oh, okay. Interesting. So there was an outrage. And it's all the newspapers <laughs> were swamped with uh, letters from the public calling him a traitor. Really? Uh, yeah, saying okay. he was offended. And I've got a couple of highlights um, from his five broadcasts. For example, he described French officials as nasty looking. He said, and I quote, I have acquired a wholesome loathing for Belgians, which is the hallmark of the discriminating man. Mm. If I never see anything Belgian again in this world, it will be all right with me. Uh, he, he forgot about the chocolate. <laughs> he did forget about the chocolate, actually. That's, he must have yeah. not liked chocolate. Um, yeah. He also described the Nazis that he knew as genial, pleasant people. Oh, come on. Doesn't sound so great. And he implied no. that uh, he would be living under the German Reich for many years, if not forever, which oh, would no. kind of suggest well, that the Nazis, have done here? the Nazis are going to win um, the war, which is exactly what the Nazis wanted him to say. But mm. I should stress, he was given creative freedom. 
everything he said in these radio broadcasts, he was allowed to say. He wasn't okay. censored by the Nazis or told or given a script. He just said it himself. Really? Well, is that likely? Well, he never denied it. And okay. we know this because in 2010, some MI5 files were declassified. And these files were their investigation into P.G. Woodhouse's activities oh. with the Nazis. So the story doesn't end there. So he was in Berlin in this fancy hotel and his wife um, joined him uh, eventually. Uh, and they lived together in this fancy hotel until 1943 when they moved back to Paris. And they were just allowed to. The German, they said, can we go back to Paris because we don't like these air raids by the British. They're bombing Berlin. Can we go to Paris, please? We don't want to be killed. Yeah. yeah. And the German, the Nazis said, yes, you can. So they went and moved to uh, the Hotel Bristol, which is a five-star hotel in, of course, yeah. in Paris. There's a theme here. Yep. <laughs> and they lived there. The hotel was known for being full of other British traitors, including, yeah. for example, someone that P.G. Woodhouse got to know, who was, um, oh, so, what's his That's name? Right. I've forgotten so, his name. So, so well, I mean, were they just clubbing together, like a bit of a... A little a, bit, a, yeah. A bit of a deal, a bit of a deal, deal going on here. A little bit. You, know, you all stay on the hotel and band together and say how good the Nazis are and we won't kill you and your dog. <laughs> Well, some of them were actually more, they didn't have to be threatened. Uh, so one of their neighbours in the hotel was John Amory, who's uh, the brother of a Tory MP. Mm. Who um, uh, was hanged at the end of the war for being a traitor. Really? Yeah. Wow, yeah. Not the, not the kind of circles you want to be in. Yeah. Mm. But it turns out that from these declassified MI5 files... It was Amory who suggested to the German Secret Service that Woodhouse might be useful as a propagandist. Ah, I see. Yeah. So, man hanged for treachery by the British in 1945 was the one who proposed Woodhouse should do it. Now, I wanted to ask you a question so far. Okay. Would you classify him as a traitor from what you've heard? Uh, a, tra a traitor. Uh, I mean, maybe more of a sympathizer than okay. a traitor. Mm. Um, because, of course, he's not. I mean, we're talking what, 90, what, what year? What were we talking? 1943 now, and he's in Paris. Yeah, 1943 I mean, to 45. Yeah. You're going by how he's been treated, right? Mm. For him, he's been okay. He's been put in a, in, in a prison for a little bit. Not going to be happy with that. But then. You're free to do as you wish. We're going to pay you lots of money. You can come and go as you like from Berlin to Paris. And let's be honest, you're probably quite unlikely to know about the true extent of the atrocities. All you know is about the, the hate spewing from Hitler's mouth, but it doesn't affect you directly. Mm -hmm. So sympathizer, yes. Traitor, I think, is quite, at this stage, is quite a strong word, but probably. Fair enough. Um, because I only ask because the, the British people at the time, the BBC even broadcast a, a radio show of a journalist just ranting and raving and denouncing him as a traitor uh, okay. in response to his radio broadcasts. So the British people um, were pretty keen on considering him a traitor. So MI5 at the end of the war investigated and they sent someone over to interview him and collect some papers um, at the end of the war. And I've changed my mind. He's a filthy <laughs> traitor. <laughs> but they agreed with you though, Martin. They, they decided that he was unwise rather than treacherous. And mm. that there, it helps if you have a lot of money. It does help. And the director of public prosecutions decided that there was no case against him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, by the sounds of it, it sounds like, from his broadcast, it sounds like he was very derogatory towards the French, <laughs> which I'm sure not too many Brits at the time would have too much complaints about. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, does he... He doesn't say he doesn't say that he supports the Nazi regime, and he doesn't denounce the British. Mm. He's yeah. just kind. Of, so, so yeah, so I I would probably agree. Traitor, I think, is quite a strong word. Although I imagine the sentiment at the time, especially once people started knowing exactly what the Nazis were doing and the fact that he had supported them even in word, right, of 
actually yeah. they're quite friendly i can see myself living here for quite some time <laughs> i mean yeah i'd probably be screaming traitor too if i was in britain in the 1940s yeah and i think um he more or less said that he he pled the uh the stupid defense the ignorance defense and uh, i'll quote some things he said after the war uh he said of course, I ought to have had the sense to see that I was, it was a loony thing to do, to use the German radio, for even the most harmless stuff. But I didn't see it. I suppose prison life saps the intellect. <laughs> he also said that he, his radio shows were just uh, reflecting the flippant, cheerful attitude of all British prisoners. What? And, <laughs> what? <laughs> I never had any intention of assisting the enemy. And I have suffered a great deal of mental pain as the result oh, of Oh, don't give us that. Don't <laughs> give us that. Yeah. Oh, that's the, that's the Dana White defense. He's the, uh, the president of the UFC. Yeah. I mean, this is completely off topic, but he, he, he basically a while ago was like, any, any man that hits a woman is like trash, like worth anything or whatever. Yeah. And then it turns out on, I think it was New Year's Eve, this Christmas gone, there's footage of him like slapping his wife in a club and they got into a fight oh, and he slapped her. Man, yeah. And then like, and then it was very much like, so what's going to happen to you? What, what kind of punishment are you going to have? Are you going to have to step down from it? Are you going to, he was like, no, like the court of public opinion is against me and that's something I'm going to have to live with. So that's punishment enough. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah. That's right. not really, that's not really true. <laughs> yeah. That's not true at all. I've, I've had to suffer because of, because of the, yeah. <laughs> it's the same thing, isn't it? It's just, I'm, I'm uh, suffering this anguish right now and that's enough. Yeah. Well, oh dear. some oh dear. more stuff emerged from the MI5 files, which okay. might change your mind. So, in 1944, the MI5 files reveal that, for some reason, Woodhouse's wife was paid £1,500 in monthly installments by the Nazis, oh. which is the equivalent of about £53,000 today. For services rendered? We don't know. No. Uh, but they did re recover some documents from the German embassy in Paris, which refer to his work for the language section and for his work on propaganda films. Yeah, right. And Woodhouse later more omitted to the MI5 in these files uh, that he had sold the rights to a novel he wrote to a German film company during the war. Mm. Uh, okay. So again, his excuse is, they offered me money, I'm going to take it. <laughs> you know, it's like the war mate. I mean, well, I won't, I won't, no, I won't cry. But some other comments have emerged uh, since then. Comments he made before the war in the 1930s and comments he made during the war and after the war. Okay. So, just before the war, in 1939, he said to a friend, I can't see what difference it makes. If the Germans want to govern the world, why don't we just let them? <laughs> after the war, he said... A curious thing about American books these days is that so many of them are Jewish propaganda. Oh, no. Woodhouse. He also said, I always used to think Groucho Marx screamingly funny. I saw him on television the other night, and he was just a middle-aged Jew with no geniality whatever. In fact, oh, no. repulsive. This isn't looking great for you, mate. And when reflecting, reflecting on Hollywood, he said, The trouble is, you see, all these Jews out here have been having a gorgeous time for years, fooling about with the shareholders' money and giving all their relations fat jobs. Yeah. I mean, there was, I think, uh, uh, around a lot of Europe, there was anti-Jewish sentiment, wasn't there? It wasn't just mm. restricted to, was not to Nazi Germany, especially yeah. with certain classes in certain societies. Yeah. Um, so I don't think that kind of sentiment isn't, yeah, it's not, unique or even that surprising and not necessarily when, sadly a nazi thing just no a no 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 thing. just yeah. anti yeah racist anti-semitic yeah, yeah. Um, which isn't isn't there's not better it doesn't of course it doesn't justify it but no. there's a bit of a leap between saying anti-semitic horrible horrible racist remarks and uh, supporting the extermination of a race right yeah you're right there is luckily i guess but also sadly yeah. there is a line yeah. there is a difference um he also, some of the money he had during the war, for some reason, he transferred it to a man called Edward Delaney, 
who was a, an anti-Semitic American commentator who worked closely with a man called Father Coughlin, who was a Catholic priest in America, who was known in the 1930s for his tirades against the Jews and support for oh. the Nazi regime. And who broadcast, no, this is not good. Who yeah. broadcast Nazi propaganda from Berlin in America. Oh. So, um... It just doesn't look good. The optics aren't great on this one, mate. It's not great, is it? Right. And there's a memo in this MI5 file, file from 1946 um, where, in which an MI5 officer recounts a review of P.G. Woodhouse's case and the Director of Public Prosecutions said that they now take the view that if Woodhouse ever comes back to the UK, he should be prosecuted. Really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I shall clarify, it says, authorities should now bring Woodhouse to trial and leave a jury to decide the question of his guilt or innocence. Do you think he would have been convicted? I'm not confident of that, because in from 1967 onwards, there was a series of attempts to give him a knighthood, and they were, <laughs> they were blocked twice until in 1975 weeks before he died at the age of 93 they the prime minister intervened to give him a knighthood so he was knighted was he in absent uh in absentia just before he died oh man there's a in, fine line between being tried as a a nazi and being given a knighthood isn't it yeah very fine line yeah and now in 20 2006 2009 um the queen elizabeth ii um approved and the dean of westminster approved putting a monument to him in poet's corner in westminster abbey interesting so i mean a lot of this does go back to can you separate the the artist from the art right yeah there's that question especially when they're when they're from another era. obviously not not a great era for humanity was the mid 20th century no for... um but yeah i mean as i say like there's um there is a difference between that sentiment and being a Nazi. Should he be commended for his work? Regardless of not, but it happens, doesn't it? Especially with if you could, you could, you could tear down most statues of of well, I'll say most. You could tear down a lot of statues of authors and poets and artists from history if you were going to just look up what their thoughts were on what are now considered sensitive issues, and rightly so. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't think he's unique. It's just putting that up in a time where kind of, you know, we should know better and do better. <laughs> that's the difference, right? That's mm. uh, that's a really good point. Can you separate the artist from the art? I th and there's no denying, I really enjoyed P.G. Woodhouse's works, his books and short stories and the TV series based on them. Uh, yeah. I've really enjoyed them. And I think he is brilliant in his use of the English language and very imaginative. And I wonder if it's just that case of kind of the absent-minded genius, because there's a story from his time in Germany. After his radio broadcasts, the newspapers in Britain and, like I said, the BBC, and politicians and uh, people alike were all outraged and calling him all kinds of horrible things, namely mm -hmm. a traitor. And there was a German translator uh, working in Berlin at the time, who later, actually, in 1943, got sent to a concentration camp uh, because he was anti-Nazi. Ah, so okay. this is this is a good guy we're talking about. Mm -hmm. He's a good yep. German. Um, during in the context of World War Two, I mean, obviously. Yes, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. yeah. And he, um, but he was an Anglophile, and he was a big fan of P.G. Woodhouse, and he was a mm -hmm. translator, and he spoke English. And somebody came up to him one day and said, "There's this British author in this hotel who wants to get a lawyer. You can speak English. Go and help him." So this German fellow goes up to. Uh, P.G. Woodhouse and is really excited and says, oh, how can I help? And P.G. Woodhouse says, I, I want to get a lawyer. Can you find me a German lawyer who can go to England and sue the Daily Express for all these horrible things <laughs> they're saying about me? Right. And, you know, his, this man's response was, so you want me to get a German lawyer, somehow send them to Britain <laughs> with whom we're at war, so they can sue a national newspaper owned by the friend of Winston Churchill, who's prime minister of the country <laughs> that we're at war with. So maybe a, a slight lack of uh, 
knowledge on the exactly. situation. Apparently, structure. he quoted P.G. Wadassa's response as being, would that be difficult? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> that was his that response. That can't be true. <laughs> so wow. I think that that anecdote, which I... It sums it up, doesn't it? Yeah. To I, some I think extent. It's, it's easy to think that maybe he was just so caught up in his own private Idaho, he just forgot that. Yeah. He just completely yeah. didn't appreciate the political situation he was in. He clearly didn't understand how badly it would look if he does these radio broadcasts from Berlin. And he's like, I just wanted to do them to say thank you to my American friends for, <laughs> for how all their support whilst I'm in prison. And it's like, in prison, you mean in a five-star hotel whilst being paid by the German government? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think um, the other wow. thing that might be worth mentioning is that uh, I swear it's worth mentioning. I've just completely blanked out. Whilst I swear <laughs> it's just completely blanked out. Um, so <laughs> worth mentioning. That so I worth mentioning. Mention I have blanked out. So maybe it wasn't well, worth mentioning after all. No, exactly. Um, that's that's what I think about. When I'm, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's very important, but I can't remember. So it obviously wasn't anywhere near as important as I thought it was. The problem with the live stream, you get these hiccups. We could edit them out in the old days, but not anymore. Not anymore, no. This is live. This is all natural, baby. All natural. All natural. All natural. Exactly. No, Robin, thank you so much for bringing that to the table. It's, it mm. is an interesting tale and something slightly different, actually, to what we usually do. It's a, a narrative, I think. A narrative, a story. Less debate yeah. Yeah. and more of a story. And I quite liked it. A little bit of a change of pace. <laughs> so thank you. And, and of course, Woodhouse... And Jeeves and Worcester in particular is something that you know I watched as a as a kid. I watched for a while actually. Am I? And well, I don't know. Should I go back now? Is that bad? No, I should. I should. Yeah, it's, yeah. You TV can. show yeah. wasn't Woodhouse um, specifically. Um, yeah, I yeah. think when you when it's through the it's an adaptation, so it's kind of even one even one more step removed from from the author. You know. Yeah. Yes. I think I will. I think <laughs> cool. I will. We do seem to have a bit of a debate going in the live comment. The live oh, yeah. Chat. Oh, yeah. Uh, What's going got on? Brian fight? Morgan says, too bad we don't have leaders like Churchill and Roosevelt now. There we go. And then LW has responded saying, no, Churchill was bad. But in, in sarcastic, that's, sarcastic, that's sarcastic ways, writing. Yeah. 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 Churchill, Churchill's a very complicated, complicated character, which maybe we can get onto at some point. Yes. I think that's a very deep topic. Yes. Um, I told you I went, I did. I mentioned it on the podcast, didn't I? That I went to his. Uh, his oh, home, yeah, yeah. yeah. It yeah. was interesting. It was good, worth a visit if you have a chance. Could you feel his presence? Oh yeah, yeah. he was there. Ghost, the ghost of Winston Churchill was right in the corridors. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, interesting though. He, I mean, in his later years, he was massively fat by his clothes. Yeah, right. You can tell from I mean, his, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, if if, if there wasn't any other takeaways from my visit, was that <laughs> in his later years he was massively fat. Yeah. Wow. So there we go. There we go. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. Massively fat and he lived in grounds that were quite muddy. So Oh really? Oh. Yeah. So I've, that's what I learned from my <laughs> from my trip to Winston Churchill's house. You see, folks, you think the rich and powerful have it easy, but they actually live in mud. Mm, there a you pig, go. some would say. <laughs> Rolling around in his own filth. Oh. There we go. Lovely. So <laughs> You'd be gratified to know, Martin, I did a little poll in the live chat about who had the best oh, fact yeah. this week. Oh, yeah. And you won with a decisive 75%. Oh, you had the was best less fact, a fact. It's more of a story. Really, oh, it was a great it? story, though. That's a fact. It was a true story, right? So it counts. Well, yeah. Yeah. It was <laughs> not, it's not an April Fool's joke. It's a true story. So. Oh, yeah, it better not be an yeah. April Fool's joke. Mm. That's, well, that was what I was trying to avoid this time. I was like, if I look at like quite recent news and postings, there's quite a good chance that it's an April Fool's joke. And then they got me onto thinking, like, mm. in this day and age, is there room online for April Fool's jokes? Or is it just, like, fake news? Like, probably, like, half of things online anyway. Yeah. I said, what, there's a final, a final line between fake news and an April Fool's joke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so, there yeah, is. apparently this, this one is real. Yeah, I deliberately stayed offline on April Fool's Day. Uh as, a, you know, as in like serious outlets because yeah, I, yeah. I didn't because genuinely any headline these days I'm like yeah that could happen that sounds plausible <laughs> that's is this a joke no especially in Britain it feels like at the moment Britain and America oh, yeah. at the moment is just madness every headline I'm like big joke yeah. I feel like I feel like 10 year old me would be 
would think this was funny. <laughs> but <Yeah>. no, <laughs> not now. Yeah. Not anymore. I know. I know. So I want to know, oh. Martin. Yeah. What's the answer yes. to your riddle? What is the answer it? to my riddle? Well, my riddle was, for those who weren't here, what word is pronounced the same way if you take away four of its five letters? And that word is Q. Uh -huh. Q U E U E Q. Take away yeah. four letters, it's still Q. That's very clever, actually. Yeah. I like that. That one was quite good. Q. Yeah. yeah. Q. Like James Bond. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. It uh, couldn't be couldn't oh. be done for M, could it? No, no, no. There isn't a. Well, that's, yeah, yeah. That's not a word, but it might be. If you were to spell M as a word, it would be E M, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Hmm. But that doesn't work. So no, Q is the answer to that one. But if you were to spell Q as a word, I'd probably spell it as in the letter Q as a word. I'd, I'd probably just stop at the first U E. I wouldn't add the extra. Yeah, you yeah, that makes more sense. Doesn't Seems it? A, bit, <laughs> a bit unnecessary. Q B U. Although at the same time, that could be like K. So maybe you do need the extra U E. Oh, K. Yeah, no, true. Yeah, K. Yeah, K. 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 Or then if it's if you pronounce it like that, it would be K U. K. 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 You guys, how are you? Oh man. Wonderful. Well, Robin, thank you so much for bringing that one to the table. I thought oh, it was good. Thank I you really for listening it. to me uh, rave on about it. Thank you. No, and thank you to everyone at home who has been following this uh, this live stream. Um, really appreciate you being here. Cheers, guys. Um, we're going to head over and we're going to record uh, a Patreon, a little more interesting Patreon. Of course, you can head over there at patreon.com forward slash just interesting if you would like to. Um, and for the for the price of about a third of a pint in London these days, you can uh, you can get all of that good stuff. So um, so yeah, if you feel the need, the, feel the desire and need to, then do head on over, and uh, you can learn about sweat. You can learn about. I mean, what else have we got? I'm going to go through a couple of ones we've done recently. So we've done can sweat cure your anxiety? We play Would You Rather. That's us three. Me and Alex is there actually. Yeah, would you rather? And unfortunately, the Would You Rather got. A little bit too real, and that's why he's not here this week. You know, <laughs> a whale incident, uh, and then and then another one where it's just like chilling out with us. I think we were quite tired that day, so we we're just like, let's just have a chill mm. with with the patrons, chill out, chat, yeah, casual. And then before that was about books being censored. So oh, yeah. quite an eclectic mix of different topics for you there, if you fancy it. Um, but of course, no obligation. You've probably had enough of us by now. <laughs> But if you haven't, then please do join our other <laughs> wonderful Patreon supporters and YouTube members and become a supporter of the channel. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Nice one, Robin. Thank uh, you, my nose, Thank my, you. Uh, Hopefully my nose hasn't been too squeaky this episode. It is no. quite blocked, so I, I need to no. blow my nose. I need to have a drink of water. And then, quite frankly, I need to go to bed. Yeah. But thank you, enough. Robin. You, you, <laughs> you go blow yourself and everyone have a lovely time. Oh, you weirdo. Hey. You're disgustingly dirty. Uh, but actually, we, we, no, we need to record a little more interesting as well. For our patrons, of <laughs> so we'll do that. We'll do that first. <laughs> Bye, okay. everyone. Okay. See you later. Bye-bye.